What I'm going to be talking about is, in DSI, one of the big opportunities, uh, but also challenges, is that you're going to have contributions coming in from all over the world, from a lot of different people and different organizations. Uh, so how do you coordinate all of that? And if you consider what you can do with tools being built on IPFS and things like that, how do you increase awareness of those capabilities and really share the learnings and um, the, uh, the different uh, information that's generated there? So before I start that, I want to do a quick just show of hands to get a sense of the audience. So, and also to get everyone back in the mood after the break. Um, so how many of you here are developers? Just a show of hands. OK. And how many of you here consider yourself to have a research or science background? All right. And then the final question, and most important one, how many of you have ever done a literature review? OK. Great. So um, the reason I ask that is because it's central to our approach to solving this question. So what I'm going to be talking about today is this practical path to uh, have a visual Web3 native graph to weave together historical in-progress and future data. Um, and uh, we've built this on top of ceramic, so I guess you could say we're somewhat abstracted up from IPFS, but for any developers out there, we'll also share some of our experience doing that. So before I dive into that, I'll first start a little bit of why are we here at all. Um, so this uh, DSI, why I'm so excited about it, is because it's helping us really get a new momentum to um, really solve this long-standing problem. Because the world today for researchers is quite a harsh one. Um, there's, in academia, postgraduates have a high rate of depression, much higher than the norm, for example. Within organizations, you have the traditional challenges of keeping track of work, training people, and ensuring learnings and findings are shared. And I think fundamentally for society, it feels like there's a disconnect between societal needs and what, the, what, what really we would be able to do as researchers if we had a better loop between society and those researchers. Um, and so that's why we are very passionate about creating these new coordination mechanisms. Now, zooming in a little bit to the topic of, of today, one of the key aspects that we're helping with is removing these blockers to the efficient use of knowledge and data. Because um, within science and within other areas, there are a few of these tendencies that I think have been mentioned earlier as well. Uh, where, for example, you have people working in silos, and uh, you know the typical thing being you're at some conference a year later, and you meet someone, and you're like, really? You're also doing this? It would have been great to know that 12 months ago. You also have the issue of the willingness to share, because in science especially, people might be working on something and they feel very protective over what they're creating. They also can feel insecure about how well baked it is. And so this is another thing that can hinder actually sharing data. So you need to create a space that resolves that. And then there's also just the awareness of what tools and data is available. So this is what we're aiming to help address uh, with these new coordination mechanisms. Um, and that mechanism is really there to help weave together this past, present, and future, and taking people from a journey from where we are today into the new world that DSI enables. And so this is why I mentioned literature reviews, uh, because literature reviews in today's world are the way where at the beginning of your research, you get a sense of the state of the art, and you state what research gaps am I going to be filling, or are we going to be filling? And the way that they're done today is relatively archaic and takes a lot of effort, essentially. Uh, now, what we want to help facilitate is a transition from where static literature reviews live in PDFs and so on into where they can become composable graphs, which essentially mean that all these people are doing this work to essentially synthesize knowledge and say, what is the state of the art? Make that composable and live together and actually be able to learn more efficiently from the work that others are doing. And what this does, it basically translates literature reviews into a global decentralized coordination graph. And when you combine that with decentralized storage mechanisms, you get an extremely exciting mechanism for how you can then collect the questions that we need solved, the different claims that people are coming with for how to solve them, the evidence for that, so that people can learn from others more efficiently and accelerate our progress. It also importantly means that in today's world, you've probably seen policymakers not always so up to date on everything. And I think this is another thing that we hope to solve because by putting this information in these graph representations, you can create like a, a, a trail, like a breadcrumb trail from the high level question that is the policymakers thinking through to the deep science. And this means that you can have really cool mechanisms that help inform policymakers and help also citizens hold them accountable. So, Diving into the demo shortly, just as an introduction, um, we've built one app which helps researchers basically read through PDFs faster. And 
this was what brought us to DSI because we built that app as a way to resolve this issue that we saw a lot of people had where they just are overwhelmed by the information they need to look through. Um, and we want, that was initially then a solo player app, and we now wanted to make that multiplayer. And so DSI felt like the perfect environment to pursue that because you had a community that was coming together with the shared principles of greater research or agency, more control over the knowledge that you're generating, but also better reward mechanisms and an overall better uh, functioning mechanism for society. And so this is the graph element that I'll be talking about today, and this is what we're building on Ceramic. And so, one key element to discuss for, before I now jump into the demo is discourse graphs. So discourse graphs is a data schema that was developed by Joel Chan, funded by Protocol Labs. Shout out to Sylvia and Carola from the network research team. This is a fantastic foundational data schema for pursuing this synthesis task. And the beauty of it is that you already have teams around the world using it um, in, and currently not necessarily all of them joined up, but because we're all using the same data schema, we're all working in the same direction already. And so to briefly describe it, the nodes in that data schema are the question that you're looking to answer, the claims that are being made to inform that question, the evidence that supports or opposes those claims, and then the source of that evidence. So it's a super simple data schema to follow, but it's very flexible to a lot of different scenarios. That's why we're so excited about it. So with that, I'll quickly jump over to the demo side of things. And what I'll do here is just take you on a quick little journey of how you move from a world as it is today to this graph, and then I'll briefly touch on the new opportunities that this opens up. And so uh, in the theme of interplanetary, uh, I'll use a very far off problem, which is the terraforming of Mars using giant mirrors. Um, and so this is going to show you basically how you can gather evidence on that and contribute to it to a graph. Um, it can also be used for problems closer to home. And so the first app that you see here, this is the lateral app as it is today. It lets you collect all the papers that you're reading in one place. And if you open it, what you'll see is this project table. And what this sets out are the documents as you wrote and the concepts you're looking for as the columns. And uh, it's structured this way to map onto how people are familiar with doing lit reviews today, where basically a lot of people might be copy and pasting over to different tables, but it puts that all in one place. And uh, I won't dive into too much on this interface right now, but it also helps you really quickly find evidence because it chops up all your papers into paragraphs and subsections and lets you search by keyword. And when you find a result you like, it helps you find similar results across the other documents. So you can really quickly gather evidence. Um, but importantly, what it also lets you do is then export it as a discourse graph. So if I click here, essentially what this does is that we infer from the structure of our table the discourse graph um, data schema. And what this lets me do is then actually paste that into, and I did it twice here, but paste it into a graphical representation. And I'm showing you this as a transition step because this just shows you how you take that same information structured in one interface and you put it in a totally different interface with the same information. And this will be a key theme uh, for, for the benefits of using Ceramic for this. Because what we can then do is we can actually put that on a decentralized data network. So here I can then log in with MetaMask to the same interface, but then with Ceramic as a back end and all things go into plan, I can then paste, and what this is doing is now publishing that information to Ceramic attributed to my wallet, and what this makes is this amazing environment where you open up the full gambit of new incentive mechanisms, interrelations with other uh, Web3-based um, DSI tooling, and you have this living multiplayer environment where every researcher comes with their data, has full control over their data, and any tool that wants to speak to Ceramic can then have that wallet login and be enriched with the data that is associated with your ID. So you get this very uh, exciting new world for bringing together researchers using this. And the other thing to mention is that this is now a representation of things as they are today. So the evidence is from literature, but the next step that we'll be working on is essentially that you can then bring in evidence nodes that are living evidence nodes. So for example, if I were to send a giant space mirror up to Mars and start actually doing the uh, terraforming, I could have a live feed of is my data actually matching up to what I assumed in my theory. And these are the types of things that you then have this living map of the decisions that you're making, how well that's working, and so on. 
And also, it means that it opens up for if, if I need new information, I can actually request that directly from the graph. And so this is, for example, why we're very excited in working with LabDAO and what they're building, because you could actually say, here is a research gap, and make a call directly to the lab exchange and get data back from them um, instantly. And so these are all the pieces that are coming together to have a massive acceleration effect for the researcher workflow. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's I think, the, the key point of this demo. I think also, feel free, if you're a developer and interested in ceramic, please come and talk to us because they've just released Compose DB. And I think an important theme in this conference as well is like the ease at which you can now build in this environment is wild. The speed at which you can do things is incredible because of all the layers that many of the people at this conference have helped build. And so thank you for that as well from our perspective. And uh, yeah, so this is just to reinforce that here, for example, with LabDAO, this ability to call for an experiment could then be as simple as an additional node. Um, and this is very much what, what we're now um, aiming to facilitate is that we see a lot of different uh, tools that you can layer on top of this graph. So with Radical, for example, they have drips, which lets you split funding um, and have programmatic ways of doing that. So this opened up new mechanisms for uh, distributing funds. Um, Gitcoin's already, we already did a great collab with LabDAO for a Gitcoin grant, uh, as Nicholas mentioned, uh, for a biomedical knowledge graph. Uh, so this is already opening up new funds that we can distribute to researchers. Um, and this is also where um, we've, and as, as mentioned already, Protocol Labs and the network research team have been very helpful in uh, you know, talking through this process as we've gone forward in the journey. Um, and so the, the other piece to mention is that now what we're essentially doing is validating this. So we set up these science missions, which is what I call them essentially, which is our way of showing what happens when you use these new incentive mechanisms and these new tools, bring researchers together, and effectively prove that it's the fastest way to generate scientific knowledge. Because by doing so, you can start putting runs on the board that brings more people into the community with, uh, with clear evidence that this, that this really works. And so we have the um, work within longevity with, with LabDAO. Uh, which is where we also had the Gitcoin grant, which was very successful and meant that I think, uh, depending on where the matching lands, we have about $15,000 to now uh, give to researchers, which is very exciting. Um, and then within consciousness, we're setting up a project where uh, that'll be about coordinating labs that are looking at consciousness from different perspectives because it's a very interesting but very complex multidisciplinary space. So these tools can let us get those multiple perspectives to actually move forward on a deeper understanding there. And another one that we're looking at is essentially energy because this is a very top of mind issue, of course, for the world, but it's one that where it's easy to get lost in the weeds because you have so many different um, things being proposed that especially from the policymaking perspective, there's just this very quick news cycle where you lose track of like what is actually going on. And so this is somewhere where we feel there's a lot of opportunity to also showcase how this can help inform citizens more effectively as well. Um, so, Overall, what we're aiming to do is bring these tools together to really empower individual researchers to move faster and then have these coordina coordination mechanisms to distribute rewards more effectively so that we share our insights as they're happening. And we also can then prove that in such a way that invalidates legacy bureaucracy with evidence and the misaligned incentives that they, uh, that they lead to. And that's really our, our goal going forward. Uh, so, Anyone here who's interested in this space or have tools that they're building that they'd like to make interoperable, a key theme, all that data that lives on ceramic that is then public and not encrypted is available to play with as it gets generated. So, you know, you could think of a dedicated interface just to questions, a dedicated interface just to sourcing particular types of evidence, all speaking to the same data model with all participants feeling comfortable with a decentralized network uh, that we're all writing to. So. That is my talk. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>